Hello, welcome to this knowledge clip about referencing. This video teaches you where you need to refer to the used sources in your writing assignments. When you include ideas, information or data from others in your own assignments, you need to give them credit. That's why you mention the sources in your own document as a reference. But where or how often should you do this in order to avoid plagiarism? And why are there two different ways to cite a work? Keep calm and keep watching to find out. An in-text reference is rather short and appears within the body of a text, as you might have guessed. It briefly identifies the cited work by its author and year of publication and enables readers to find a corresponding entry in the alphabetical bibliography. Bibliographical entries, on the other hand, provide all information necessary for readers to identify and retrieve each source cited in the text by looking it up online or in a library. These long references are listed in the bibliography, which is generally the last component of a writing assignment, after the title page and the actual text. To conclude, each of your sources should appear at least twice in a writing assignment, Firstly, it is cited in the text and secondly, it is repeated as a full reference containing more information in the bibliography. There is one exception to this rule. Sometimes works cited cannot be retrieved because they were online sources that are no longer available on the internet, for example. Or they are part of personal communication like text messages, online chats, telephone conversations, unrecorded classroom lectures and so on. Since these source types cannot be consulted by an outsider, they are not included in the bibliography. But you still refer to them in the text by providing the initials and surname of the communicator, and a date that is as exact as possible. Personal communication is the only kind of source that requires the initials of the author in the in-text reference. In any other case, you should only mention the surname. <laughs> You now know where references should be inserted in a document, so let's move on to the next question. Where and how frequently do you add in-text references to your text? The general rule is, give appropriate credit to the source but avoid under-citation and over-citation. Under-citation can result in plagiarism, while over-citation is unnecessary and possibly distracting. It is considered over-citation to write down the same reference in every sentence when the source and topic have not changed. Whenever you paraphrase, summarize or quote a work, you need to mention it as an in-text reference. However, there are some small differences in how you do it exactly. When you summarize or paraphrase an idea from a source within a paragraph, you should cite this work in the first sentence in which it is discussed and only repeat the index reference in the following sentences when the subject changes. The index reference is placed immediately after the information being paraphrased or summarized. When that is at the end of the sentence, write the full stud after the reference. You can also include the author in the sentence and then place the year of publication in parentheses after the name of the author. In addition, when a paraphrase or summary consists of ideas from multiple sources, make sure it is clear which idea comes from which source by putting the correct in-text reference after each different idea. In case a paraphrase or summary continues in a new paragraph, you need to add the in-text reference again. Besides the summary or paraphrase, you can directly quote the words of others. If you quote another work or refer to a specific part of a text, you should not only mention the author and year of publication, but also the page numbers in the in-text reference. Use the abbreviation P for one page or double P for several pages before writing the actual numbers. If the source does not have page numbers or the page numbers might be different because the reader can change the font size, use other location information like a paragraph number or chapter or table. Page numbers are normally not included when paraphrasing or summarizing, but may be added when it will help the reader to find the information in longer sources. When it is a short quotation, always add the index reference to the same sentence as the quote. You can put the reference between parentheses and immediately after the quotation or at the end of the sentence. But you can also include the author and year of publication in a sentence 
and then place the page or paragraph number in the parentheses after the quotation or after the author and year if the quotation comes first. For a short quote, you need to bear in mind the following punctuation rules. You can put commas and periods within quotation marks, except when the in-text reference follows at the end of the sentence. In that case, the period comes after the reference to close the sentence. Add a question or exclamation point within the quotation marks if the quote itself is a question or exclamation. But place it outside the quotation marks if the whole sentence is a question or exclamation. When you insert a quote that is 40 words or more, which is called a block quotation, you have two options. You can either use an in-text reference in parentheses after the quotation's final punctuation, or mention the author and year in the sentence before the quotation, and place only the page numbers in parentheses after the quotation's final punctuation. Either way, never add a period after the closing parentheses. Always double check your sentences carefully to ensure you have cited the sources appropriately and clearly. In this knowledge clip, you learned where you need to refer to the used sources in your writing assignments. You can practice this by completing the exercises and assignments in the learning path about referencing on Euphora. Thank you for watching. Be sure to follow us on Facebook for more happy learning.